our war cry. We don't even know that we're at war. We don't understand that we're in hostile territory. This isn't a time of peace. It's against the principalities and the powers that are puppeteering the people. And we are in a position to see souls set free. Since this has been the ancient war cry throughout all the generations of the Hebrew nation. Rock, Kasak. Where does it come from? Kasak. This is the Hebrew. The rock-like oomph of the spiritually zealous heart. The game face of a mighty man. Tenacity of soul. The gritting of the teeth of the spirit-inspired warrior. And the bearing of those teeth to the enemy. Kasak is possessing a resolute and growling resolve for the glory of God. A flush of spiritual fervor. A tensing of all a soldier's muscles. There's a Kasak. We don't have that spiritually. We should. We don't. Because we don't know what we're engaged with. Did you know that you have the armory of heaven? That you have everything you need for life and godliness to push the enemy forces back? And so when you hear Kasak, your knuckles spiritually should immediately turn white. And you should find yourself gritting your spiritual teeth with a belligerence against the enemy. He goes down. There are souls that must be saved. Okay, that's just Kasak. The Hebrew statement is Rock Kasak. However, in the Bible, where that came from, it's Kasak Imats. The other word that goes with it, Imats. It's heavenly audacity. It's rushing headlong into the most hazardous and impossible battles without pausing to consider the impossibilities. Who had Imats in the Bible? David against Goliath? That's some serious Imats. Okay, he's rushing headlong against the Goliath. It's like, David, we might want to think about this a little. No, I'm not weighing the impossibilities. This is for my God. It's a confidence in victory even before the field is taken. It's lambs moving with liquid ferocity straight into the lion's lair. How about the three that overheard him in the cave of the duel? Says, oh, for a cup of cool water from the well of Bethlehem. Those guys had a moths. They go run it out, break through a garrison of Philistines to grab a cup of cool water and then bring it back through the garrison. They're being hunted by Philistines all the time trying not to spill a cup of water. That's the moths. Mere men and women on earth are eaten up by the enemy. However, we're not just mere men and women of this earth. We are redeemed. We are bought with a price and we've been changed into the body of Christ. A moths means swift-footed, all-believing, super-conquering, prevailing faith in the Lord of battles. What happens to the world if Christians once again get Kasak and Amats? You know what the apostles had after Pentecost? Something came into them. What was it? You can say it very simply. Kasak and Amats. The Spirit of God. He came in to win. He came in to turn this world on its head. Moses' last gasp. This is his great speech before the Promised Land, which he never got to enter into. And he's laying out the ground rules for the kingdom that is about to be established across that Jordan River. Be strong and of good courage. Kasak, Amats, fear not nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he it is that does go with thee. He will not fail thee nor forsake thee. And Moses called unto Joshua and said unto him in the sight of all Israel, Kasak, Amats, be strong and of good courage. For thou must go with this people unto the land which the Lord has sworn unto their fathers to give them. And thou shalt cause them to inherit it. Well, what's happening there? The men and women of God are coming to take what was purchased. The promise. You are surrounded by 31 hostile empires. You know, that's what they were headed into. 31 empires on the other side of that Jordan River. 31. This is where we are at as the Church of Jesus Christ, yet we are there without a war cry. Let's understand that we are out to win for the glory of Jesus Christ. And even if we die, we win. Doesn't matter what happens to our bodies. We obey, God wins. Now suddenly we're crossing. Joshua is the same name for Jesus in the New Testament, by the way. Yeshua. This is the Savior, the man of salvation, who has come in to bring us into the inheritance. Be strong and of good courage. 
For unto this people shall thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swore unto their fathers to give them. Have I not commanded thee? Be strong and of good courage. Rock the sock. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. Rock the sock, Israel. Rock the sock, men and women of God Almighty. But all the powers of earth and hell that come against your soul, and all the powers of earth and hell that are puppeteering the lost masses, you hit them square in the teeth. And you show love to this world. To anyone who would spit in your face, you serve them and you love them in return and say, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Rock a sock, Israel.